Are you thinking about buying a rock tumbler but confused about the difference between a rotary tumbler and a vibratory tumbler? Hi, I'm Rob and that's what I'm going to explain to you today. Uh, this is a rotary tumbler. It's a Lortone 33B and it works by just slowly turning the barrels around and grinding the rocks on the inside. Uh, typically you do four stages in this. Uh, you start out with a coarse grit and then you keep progressing to finer and finer grits. Uh, until you get to polish, which is just a very, very fine grit. Uh, so the first stage in this is really good for shaping rocks. Uh, so if you have a rock with uh, jagged corners and stuff on it, it'll round those off. Uh, you can grind them down to remove cracks and holes. And so that first stage does a good job of this. Now most of the directions that come with tumblers tell you to run the first stage for a week. And in a week, it's not going to do that much grinding. So I like my rocks completely free of all holes and cracks. So I'll run them over and over and over. So I do like one week and then I clean out the barrel and I do another week and clean out the barrel. And I keep doing that until the rocks look the way I want them to look. So I might run that first stage for weeks or even months. Uh, it's not at all unusual that I run them for, for more than one month. Uh, so then after that, you've got three more stages. And those three stages in here, the way I do it, I go seven days and then 10 days and then two weeks. Uh, the polish I run for two weeks and it seems to give you just a little better polish if you go for that little extra time. So for the last three stages in this, it takes me about, about a month uh, to do that. This is a vibratory tumbler. Uh, this is a lotto tumbler and it's attached to a big concrete block here because the whole thing shakes and if it wasn't on a block, it would just slide right across the floor. So there's some springs down here. This is a motor back here and it's got these two fans attached to it and inside the fans there's weights. So the weights go around, they're off center, so as they go around it shakes it. So the whole thing just sort of shakes around but really, really fast. Uh, the barrel in this doesn't, it just shakes. It doesn't turn like these do, but if you open it up and look inside you'll see the rocks slowly turning around inside there. So the rocks are moving uh, they're, they're vibrating against each other, plus they're kind of moving around in a circle inside there. Uh, this machine does a good job at polishing the rocks. Uh, it can get the polish done uh, really, really nicely, I think more consistently than this machine does. Uh, and it does it really quickly. So where this takes a month to do those last three stages, this really only does the last three stages, but it only takes a week to do them. So I run what would be, it's the 220 grit and this is the second stage. I run that 220 grit in here for two days and then I go to the next grit and I run it for three days and then I run the polish for two days. So seven days total. So where this is slow and those th last three stages, this is really, really fast. So let's take a look at the, uh, the different racks that I've tumbled in these so you can see the difference up close and uh, we'll do that now. Okay, let's start with these three rocks. These were completely done in a rotary tumbler. This is Serape Jasper from Mexico. Uh, in fact, I did a tutorial on how to use a rotary tumbler and these were the rocks that I tumbled. So from beginning to end, done in a rotary tumbler. In comparison to that, here's some Montana agates that were done completely in a vibratory tumbler. So this is an experiment I did a long time ago. This is before I was making videos. And I wanted to see if I could shape these up like these are. See how that's all smooth and there's no holes or indentations? I tried to do that with these rocks. And uh, vibratory tumblers are very quick, so you don't usually leave them in for very long. But I did these for 28 days and I changed the grit every day because the, the grit breaks down really fast in a vibratory tumbler. Um, so even after 28 days of shaping them, then I went on for a week after that to, to polish them, um, I couldn't get all these holes out. So you see all these little indentations and cracks. I don't like that look, but a lot of people think that looks better, looks more natural. So that's up to you how you like them to look. So those are Montana agates done in a vibratory tumbler only. These Montana agates were done starting in a rotary tumbler to shape them, and then I finished up in a, and finished them up in a vibratory tumbler. So. Uh, you can see the difference. And these are also smaller uh, because they just wear down a lot more trying to get all those little holes out. So vibratory rotary. Here's another example of a rock done in a rotary tumbler. This is a pudding stone. 
probably my favorite putting stone. Uh, but that was done completely in a rotary tumbler. And the reason I didn't finish it in a vibratory tumbler is because this wouldn't fit through the hole in my tumbler. Uh, the lotto tumbler has kind of a small hole. Compare that to these two. These were done in just three days using a vibratory tumbler. So they were only in the vibratory tumbler. Kind of looks like there's something painted on them. There's, there's no coating on any of the rocks that I ever show you. If there is, I'll tell you, but so far I have never coated them with anything. These are just polished. So in three days, they'll look like that. So once again, let's compare. There's a big difference. And then the other thing that I do with this is I make little shapes. So here's a little shamrock. That's just a fridge magnet I made. Um, so this is cut out on a saw and then it goes directly from the saw right into the vibratory tumbler. And it'll keep the shape really nicely. Uh, this top part was done in a cab machine, but the bottom of this was shaped on a saw again and then just thrown right into my vibratory tumbler and it comes out looking like that. This is a guitar pick. Um, shaped this on my cab machine. You know, cut it out in the saw and then shaped it in the cab machine. Just got it roughly shaped in and then I throw it in the tumbler to polish it up. So, another thing you can do. And then, here's kind of a, a nice comparison, I think. This is what a cross looks like when I cut it out on the saw. So that's roughly cut out. You can still see my, my lines on there where I cut it. This was put into a rotary tumbler to polish it. And then this was put into a vibratory tumbler to polish it. So you see how the vibratory tumbler keeps the nice crisp edges? They're not as sharp as these edges. They're just rounded off subtly. And then this one's much more rounded off. And they, they all started out the same size. They started out this size. I cut them all the same size all the time. So you see how much more worn down that is and how rounded the ends are? Now you might like that look, but it's different than this look. So rotary, vibratory. So since this machine is so good at shaping the rocks, I use this kind of machine just for doing the first stage. So I'll run the first stage in here and then when they're done with the first stage, I move them over to the vibratory tumbler and this will put a really good polish on in just a week instead of spending a month over here. I also get a more consistently good polish on this machine than I do with this one. They'll both polish rocks up, I just think it's easier in this one. Uh, another thing to know is that this uses a lot more grit than this one does. So this is a three pound barrel. Uh, this one's a four and a half pound barrel. And you don't need to weigh your rocks when you're tumbling, but this is just a little bit bigger. Um, they usually rate them by weight. That's just the approximate weight of the rocks themselves that's gonna be in it. But once again, you don't have to measure or weigh your rocks. I never do. So my rule of thumb in a rotary tumbler is to use one tablespoon I've got props. One tablespoon of grit for every pound the barrel's rated for. So since this is a three pound barrel, I use three tablespoons of grit. Some people use more. I probably am on the lower side of that, but three or four, or maybe even five tablespoons of grit in one of these barrels. This barrel, uh, it depends. Oh, and that goes for all stages here. So all the stages, first, second, third, and fourth, I use about that much polish or grit or whatever I'm using in that stage. On this one, I start out with two tablespoons, okay? So instead of three, I'm using two over here. But then when I go to the last two stages, I use a half teaspoon, which is what this measure is. Um, so just a half teaspoon for the whole barrel. So over here, I'd be using three tablespoons. Over here, it's just a half teaspoon. So this uses way, way, way less grit. Um, Another thing, uh, difference is the kind of media you use, use in this. So you can use plastic or ceramic media in with your rocks. This will use either plastic or ceramic. This one you can only use ceramic. The plastic's too light and it just sort of floats up to the top. Since this one's turning, it keeps it all mixed up nicely. So they can both use ceramic. This one can also use plastic. Personally, I hate using plastic and I don't use plastic in either one. So to me, that's not a difference at all. Uh, next thing I want to show you the difference in is the sound that they make. Uh, and I need to get one more tumbler because I want to show you a bigger version of this also. Uh, so you can see how loud each one of these is. This is the Lortone QT12 tumbler. It has a 12 pound barrel on it. You can also buy this tumbler with two 6 pound barrels instead of the 12 pound barrel. Uh, but it's going to sound about the same. 
So uh, none of these have on off switches, so I'm just gonna be plugging them in. Uh, these really don't need on off switches. They just run for literally months at a time. Uh, this one you do have to turn it off when you take the barrel out of it because it's not supposed to run without the barrel. It just shakes too much. Um, it would be nice if this had a switch, uh, but I just have it on a power strip and I just use a switch on the power strip. So let's listen to the 33B here first. So that one is the first tumbler I got, um, this exact tumbler, it still works. Uh, we do not have an insulated ceiling in our basement and you can't really hear that one upstairs too much. You can hear it if the refrigerator and everything's off, you can hear it a little tiny bit, but not bad at all. That one never bothered us. This one uh, bothered my wife. I kind of like the sound of it because I'm thinking about the rocks tumbling, but she didn't like it. It's uh, because it's a bigger barrel the rocks have farther to fall inside the barrel. It's not the motor that's louder, it's the, the rocks inside the barrel. So it makes kind of a thumping or rattly sound. It's the bigger thumps that you can hear upstairs really well. I shouldn't say really well, you can't hear it over the TV, but this one's definitely audible upstairs. By the way, I've got this up on top of this table here. They'd all be quieter if they're on the floor because um, it does vibrate the table a little bit. So uh, the Lorto or the um, Lotto, um, this just makes sort of a humming noise. It's not that rattly noise. So here we go. Definitely a different kind of noise than these other tumblers are. So with this being such a steady noise, um, I don't. this one doesn't bother me at all. Once again, you can probably hear it upstairs if everything's off and you listen really, really closely. But with it being that steady sound, it's just not that offensive. I have to interrupt the video to make a correction. When I was talking about how loud this tumbler is, I was thinking about my other Lotto tumbler that is underneath the stairs that goes from my basement up to my garage. So it's in a little enclosed space that blocks some of the sound from going upstairs. When I turn this one on, and it's not underneath the stairs, you could really hear it upstairs quite clearly. Uh, it was really pretty annoying. So I did, uh, did something to help. I put a towel underneath. I just folded up a, a little hand towel and put it underneath the tumbler, and that separates the block from the concrete floor and really helps a lot. You can still hear it upstairs a little bit, but it's much better that way. So if you get one of these, make sure you put something underneath there to dampen the sound. Okay, back to the video. So this is the only vibratory tumbler I've ever had. Um, I haven't used any other ones, so I can't compare the sounds of them. I've heard kind of mixed reports about like the thumblers, the UV-10, the UV-18s. Uh, I've heard they can be really loud, and then I've heard that they're not much different than this. So I don't really know what to say about that. Uh, like I said, I just don't have experience. Uh, when I was researching tumblers to buy my first one, I, I looked at the, 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 the same comparison, rotary versus vibratory, and I got the impression that vibratory tumblers were really difficult to use and that you had to babysit them all the time. That's a little bit true, but I think it's kind of overblown. So with a rotary tumbler, you open it up once a week to, to clean it out. Uh, and when you put the lid back on for the week, you just leave it run for the week. You don't touch it. Um, beginners usually end up opening it up after a couple days to see what's going on inside. But then it's hard to get the lid back on because it, it makes a mess and you, you got to put the lid on and make sure it doesn't leak. So I recommend not opening it during the week. But if I'm gone for a weekend or, or even three or four days, I'll just leave these running. Um, just they're tumbling while I'm gone. I don't need to do anything with them. I'm not worried about them being running while I'm gone. Uh, this, on the other hand, does need a little bit of babysitting. So what happens on these is it dries out on the inside, especially in the first stage. So the, the two days that you're running 220, it dries out kind of quickly. Uh, so I check it three times, two or three times a day. Uh, I used to do it when I got up in the morning, then after work, and then again at, just before I went to bed. Um, and all you have to do is you take the lid off, and you can do that while it's running, and you can look in there and you can see the rocks moving around. And if it looks a little bit dry, you give it a little squirt of water. Um, in fact, I forgot to check this one yesterday and it dried out completely. I, I had a big rock in there, it pushed the lid up a little bit. I put rubber bands over the top, but the lid was up like that and it was completely dry and stopped. And I just squirted some water in there until they started moving. 
Um, I took a big one big rock out so it wouldn't push the lid off again, but that doesn't even hurt it. It's better if it doesn't happen, but even if it does dry out, it's not that big a deal. You just, just squirt water until it moves again and you're all set. So check this two or three times a day. Uh, after the first stage, you really only have to check it like once a day, and a lot of times I don't check it at all after the first stage because it doesn't dry out as fast. So yeah, it's a little bit more work. I don't leave this running over a weekend. Uh, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. I, don't, I wouldn't be worried about the amount of effort this takes. All right, and then uh, there's a price difference on these. So the price is going to be vary depending on where you buy it, but there's a one barrel model of this called the 3A, and it costs just over $100. Uh, so that's, you know, the, the, the National Geographic I think is $90, um, so, so around $100 for an entry model rotary tumbler. Um, this costs about $250. Oh, with two barrels, this one's about $100, $140, somewhere around there. Uh, this one's about $225. So most vibratory tumblers cost a little bit more than an entry level rotary tumbler. So I think a lot of people buy rotary tumblers just because you can get into one for like $100. So people think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. So they buy a $100 tumbler. They don't want to spend $225 for their first one. So there is a little bit of a price difference. So let's recap. Uh, this machine's slower. This machine's faster. This one uses more grit. This one uses less grit. This one's really good at shaping the rocks. Uh, rocks will go in here uh, with holes and cracks and bumps and stuff. And if you run them long enough, especially in that first stage, uh, you can have them nice and smooth and, and well-rounded. This one's going to keep the original shape much more. Uh, this one requires less attention. You just put the rocks in and you let them go. Um, this one you need to check up on it a couple of times a day. Uh, this one's a little bit cheaper, especially for an entry model. So if you get one with just one barrel, you can get it for about half the price of a vibratory tumbler. Of course, the prices vary a lot, but in general, these are a little bit cheaper. And then the sound they make. Uh, this can be kind of clunky sounding, and this has more of a hum. I wouldn't say one's really louder than the other. It's more a matter of a different sort of sound. So which one should you get? Well, if you just want to have one tumbler, or you're just getting started on this, or, or maybe you don't have a lot of money to spend on it, the rotary tumbler is probably the way to go. You can do all the stages in here. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, takes a little more grit, so you might spend a little bit more money on electricity and on grit, uh, but the, the cost of getting the machine itself is a little bit cheaper. Uh, if you're patient, good machine to use. Uh, if you're impatient, uh, this is really nice uh, to either add to it or use instead of it. Uh, if you only have this machine, you're not going to get those nice, rounded, completely smooth rocks. So if that's what you're after, you want to get one of these for sure. Uh, if you like a more natural look, then, then get this one. The other thing is if you're doing shapes and you want to cut out uh, little crosses or something like I do, uh, this will keep the shape much better. This is going to round stuff off probably more than you want to. Uh, ideally, if you've got the money for it, Get one of each, um, then you can do whatever you want. You know, I use this for my shaped rocks, uh, my little crosses and stuff. I love this thing for the first stage. Um, like I said, the way I like to use it is run the first stage in this. I've, I could use a lot of these barrels. That's why I built the big tumbler over there. Uh, and then just finish them up really quickly in here. So I'll leave you with that. And if you haven't seen my review of this machine, uh, I'll link that here so you can check that out. So I'll see you over on that video. 